Welcome back everybody. I'm John Zadar. This is Monday, April 25th and you're watching On Top and Hot. What a day it was for the start of the week. A very volatile market. Though the OTC market, not so much. However, I still found some OTC and penny stocks that were moving today with cause and reason. And I'm going to share those with you right now. Come on. As you've probably already guessed, we're going to be starting our initial due diligence on these stocks at the otcmarkets.com website because it's updated every single day by the SEC and FINRA, but also because they tell me which stocks have the most trades. And that's how we're finding our top runners today. On the otcmarkets.com website, come over here to current market, click that button, it'll bring you to the most active stocks across the entire OTC market, which has over 12,000 securities. So those those are cliff notes, if you will. We are going to be looking at the advances, though you could look at decliners if you like to short stocks. You can go for stocks just over a dollar, just over a nickel, or you can look at everything. We're going to look at everything. Click that all button, click that more button, and we are now dedicated to the advancers. We're only going to be looking at stocks we can trade. These black diamonds, we can't trade any of those. Those are expert markets. They've been pulled off the market for one reason or another. Normally it's because they have late filings. And if that is the case, all they gotta do is clean up those filings, get them current, and they're back on the market. We're looking at the stocks that are pink or pink limited, at least on the market. So we're gonna kick this open push this down and what we are doing is looking at trades. Now they list these stocks in order of their percentage gains. Some huge percentage gains on those. And you say, well, how, how are they selling if they can't be sold off the market? Well, actually these are being bought and sold by people behind the scenes brokers, marketers, they're actually trading these stocks. But people like me and you, no, we can't. So you can see the volume share here. You can even see how much money they've generated in sales today. But what we're looking at are trades. I want to see which stock has the most trades. The way I figure it, the more trades there are, the more people there are. The more people there are, the more money there is available to keep kicking into that pool and keep that price action going. So we're going to be looking down here for some big numbers. 10 is not a big number. 5, 6, no. 17, uh-uh. Right there. That's a big number. 413 trades today. We're looking for stocks that do over a million shares too. Now, of course, you can look at stocks that are doing less than a million, but we're looking for stocks on top and hot. So we are looking for stocks that have a lot of activity and are moving some shares. So we got 1.7 million shares at 77% gains at the end of the day. This is WSFT, Wikisoft Corp. Finished the day at just under 19 cents, 80% gains on the middle tier of the OTC market, the QB, that's the better tier. They call it better because you have to audit your financials to be there. That makes them more trustworthy, more transparent. They've got a verified profile and a transfer agent verified as well. I like to see these green ticks. This is information that the otcmarkets.com website themselves are verifying about these companies behind the scenes. Don't know exactly what it is, but I feel confident when I see these boxes ticked. So what does this company do? Well, they're in the business of data, big data. Wikisoft, data curated, credible, and reliable. In a fast moving business world of increasing globalization, Wikisoft leverages big data and associated insights from business data sets to improve performance. They accumulate data about anything and everything, including customers, and then they sell that information to businesses who cash in on it. Literally, they use that information to make money. Now, there was no news today to have this thing running, but there was a deal they made about a month ago that was a big deal and it's gonna change their bottom line. But the chatter today on Twitter, my goodness, chat, 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 and I got to presume that is what had this thing running. So what was the relative volume on this company today? Well, they normally do about 330,000 shares a day. Today she did 1.8 million. You're looking at about roughly five times her volume. Share structure. Oh, oh, look at that. Sweet. We got a low float. Not super low, but just under 21 million. That is really good. I like that. Financials. Here we go. Not going to look good. All right, we got no money for the last couple of years. And if you look at the quarterlies, psh, nothing. So the news that came out a month ago, this deal that they made that we're going to look at is important. It should change all of that. 
disclosures. We have, get out of there. We have anything new here. Now these are their financials. Of course, they're going to be current because they're current. So there's nothing new there. And I come look at the SEC filings. I'm normally looking for an 8K. Could be other things, but 8K is what I'm really looking for. These are reverse mergers, acquisitions, a new CEO coming in, board of directors, important stuff. So I like to look for those. Nothing here though. So let's go take a look at the news. All right, we got news back here to September 2021 and they're talking about aspects of their business no big changes just you know the business is progressing they're doing this they're doing that then they went and made this acquisition they announced the acquisition at the beginning of february and they made the acquisition at the beginning of march wikisoft corp acquires blockchain tech company ether labs and we're going to look at this information but it's actually covered in this piece of news so we're just going to go right on into there now this isn't real recent news it did come out march 8th but it's the most recent news and it is what they're talking about on twitter so it's important to look at wikisoft court recently announced that they had acquired 51 percent of ether labs a new york city based venture lab and ecosystem that invests in builds and deploys disruptive technologies across the blockchain space now wikisoft's vision is to combine their company's massive amount of data on startups funds and investors with ether labs disruptive blockchain technology to accelerate finance partnerships to bring them all together bring the investors to the people that need money for their projects they get the money to start building as they build they make money the money comes back to the investors and we capitalize on it that is what all of this is telling us and that is what twitter is actually talking about let's run over to twitter now i have no idea what's going to pop up here it's always changing so let's see see what i mean it's always changing sfipo no all right let's see what we got here very nice reversal yes it was a good reversal uh very possible wsft no notes someone has a controlling block something could be brewing so people are watching this no notes means they've got no debt that's always a good thing i'm picking up tidbits here with you too uh, wsft adding the last couple of days recent acquisition 20 million float trading on the qb and plenty of upside trading at 0 0.025 with 52 week highs at three dollars so over the last year she has hit three dollars oh let's see what else we got here new highs new highs but you can see there is a lot of chatter going on here about wsft and they're looking at it from a lot of different angles they're looking at it as low floats they're looking at it as being audited being on the qb they're looking at it as having a great 52 week high that they could tap into and this is all it takes folks interest interest from investors and that's what we're looking at speaking of looking at let's go look at the chart and see what that looks like so we are looking at wsft on the six month four hour chart and we're doing all of our charting on think or swim did you know this is a free trading platform and to get it all you got to do is sign up for a free trading account over at td ameritrade they're not going to ask for any money and you don't even have to trade with them don't tell them i told you that just keep your account open and you can use this just like i am so that is a six month, four hour chart that we are looking at. She has been flat, really flat here for a while, had a huge drop, had a dollar high here and fell down to a low of a penny and a half. Let's look at that one year, one day chart, see if we can see that high bubble. There it is. They said it was about $3. We got $2.98 virtually in a full year ago. And we, I can see here that the volume has definitely been increasing over the last six months. You can see that it's getting stronger and stronger and today was excessively stronger breaking out of that uh, line right there technicals all look good on the yearly let's come down to that 20 day one hour view all right now that looks pretty flat i guarantee it looks like it has no activity but if you come in and look at it there's a lot of activity that bounce right there went from two cents up to three and a half cents so that's a 75 percent bounce right there so even though it looks flat it's only flat relative to that huge mountain there and you know that mountain went from two and a half cents to 28 cents in less than two days that is over a thousand percent gains folks 
Wow, impressive. She started down here at two and a half cents with the 28 cents, fell back down here to just about 19 cents, the first pullback. Looks like she tagged the 10 day here and pulled back up, which isn't a bad sign. I like to see a tag and pull away in the right direction, of course. Let's take a look at that five day, five minute. All right, you can see she started to take off here right at the bell. And you can see that orange line is the 20 day SMA and she's sitting right on top of it and there's no other SMA on the board. That's the strongest, biggest SMA. Then comes along the 50. At this time, she's flying, she's grabbing some momentum, and when she does fall, she falls to the 50. She is now paying homage to the new strongest SMA on the board. And then she just took off. Had a fall halfway in the middle of the day and then hit the high way late in the day. I am expecting these highs early in the day. This one came quite late in the day. Look at that. That's about uh, one o'clock in the afternoon. And she fell back to the 50, crashed through the 50, bounced back, and she's just under the 50 right now. Technicals look a little weak, actually. Uh, we don't even look like we're going to do a crossover right now. But I've got to say, that extra volume we had, let me back on out here, that extra volume we had definitely catches my eye. Look at how small here, two days before, three days before, then yesterday, then today. Again, I'm repeating on no printed news, no disclosures, no press releases, nothing but people talking about all the positives that this company is producing. So you may want to follow the crowd on this one. WSFT, Wikisoft is a well-known business and they're going to get all that data out there and start making money with the help of this other company, Ether Labs. Keep your eye on WSFT. It's already surprised me once. I wouldn't be surprised if it surprises me again. So jumping back to our on top and hot list, if you will, we have WSFT right there with 413 trades. The next big trader is 157 trades with about a quarter billion shares today, 75% gains. Oh, this is ICTY, but she is a triple zero stock. And I don't like to show you triple zero stocks. That sounded bad. Nothing personal. I just like to show you stocks that are going to move sooner rather than later. So I don't look at triple zeros with us because, well, they just move too slow. Next one down is 379 trades. This is HIPH, good price, 0016, 60% gains, 124 million shares. Sounds good to me. HIPH is American Premium Water Corporation. She finished the day at 0015, 50% gains on the pink tier and current. She also has her verified profile and a transfer agent too, so she looks good. Now, I could come down here and tell you that American Premium Water Corporation is using nanotechnology to create CBD waters. I could, but I'd be wrong. That's what they've been doing for the longest time. I was investing in this company back in 2018 when all the CBD beverage companies were hot. And they've been struggling for a while. And I think it was maybe a month ago, six weeks ago, they came out with news that they had gotten involved with NFTs as well, which should have probably been something big, but it hasn't been happening. But today's news changes the game completely, changes their business completely. And we're going to touch on to that here in just a minute. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, she normally does 7 million shares. Whoa. Today she did 127 million shares. What are we looking at there? About 15 times her normal volume. What is the share structure? Well, we have a lot of shares in the share structure. Unrestricted shares is where I normally go to get my float. We got 1.6 billion shares there. Now they tell us the float is about 1 billion, but that was back in 2020. I normally don't use this line because it's normally outdated, but this one pretty much on target. So we're looking at 1.6 billion. Financials, what, get out of there. What's this company doing? Well, they have been making money. They have been making money. They did pretty good in 2020, $305,000. We know it's thousands because we got to take those three zeros, drop those behind there, and 53,000 at the end of last year. What about quarterly? Okay, quarterly, she ain't making any money. Bring those 
three zeros down, that's $2,000. Thank God she didn't have to pay anything for it. Got to keep all $2,000. What a shame. Disclosures. We might see something over here. Okay, you've got all of her current financials here. Her latest annual report just came out uh, about 10 days ago. If you want to get information about the company, everything about the company is in the annual report. Everything. And let's look at the SEC filing. No, we got nothing here, which is a little surprising. So let's go take a look at that news. All right. We've got news here that is talking about water, 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 and everything they're doing. And back here, okay, it was November. It was more than a month ago. American Premium Water Course signs agreement with NFT for Play Gaming Platform, which was big news. I think I even talked about it when it happened, but it's all old news now. All of this has nothing to do with anything anymore. It is this piece of news that came out actually Sunday, came out yesterday, American Premium Water Corps to acquire Cloud Exchange Data Center to focus on crypto mining related businesses with earnings guaranteed of 1.5 million for the first 12 months. So they tell us right down here that American Premium Water Company is to change their focus to crypto mining related businesses and will change the name of the company to reflect their new focus. All this new focus kind of tells me they're leaving the water in the rear. They go on to tell us that American Premium Water Company is pleased to announce the acquisition 100% ownership of Cloud Exchange Data Center, which is an entity that engages in crypto mining related businesses through its wholly owned subsidiary cloud exchange data center to diversify the company's earnings. Now diversify kind of sounds like it's inclusive. They're going to be doing this alongside the water, but that's not the impression I'm getting. Uh, the purchase price of the transaction will be at a consideration of $45.5 million, which reflects a projected price to earnings ratio of 30. That's pretty incredible. They go on to tell us what CloudX is all about. CloudX is engaged primarily in investment within the cryptocurrency space with a focus on crypto mining and staking. Then they go on to explain what it is. Crypto mining is actually solving mathematical problems for cryptocurrency. And whoever solves that problem gets free coins. And staking is putting those coins back in the bank, if you will, leaving them in there to support the eco economy that you have now got going. For risk management purposes, CloudX crypto mining data centers will be strategically set up in locations such as Singapore, Malaysia, Texas with various service providers. I don't know the meaning of that. From Singapore to Malaysia to Texas, one heck of a triangle going on there. But then you've got this last piece of information. With the acquisition of CloudX, the company will be focusing on the crypto mining sector and intends to change its name to American Premium Mining Corporation. The company has previously been focused on building brands that utilize cutting edge bioscience and nanotechnology in the CBD and wellness space. And there's nothing more to be said. Now, they didn't come right out and say that they're not going to be doing CBD water anymore. But I'm getting the feeling that they're not going to be doing it. However, when you use the word diversify, it does kind of sound like it's inclusive. So there is a lot of activity around this stock now. They're getting out of that boring water, which really hasn't been producing the incomes that they wanted. And they're getting into this new cloud exchange, which is working with crypto mining and crypto staking, which is hot. It is hot. Let's go take a look at that chart and see what it looks like. So now we're looking at the four hour, six month chart for HIPH. And like a lot of stocks, it has been falling for the last six months. Did slap the 200 day right here a few months ago and poked it again today, but that's it. Had a high bubble back here six months ago of 0056, not very high, huh? And a low bubble of 001. So we've got just a little over 400% difference between those two bubbles. Let's come on down to that 20 day, one hour view. She has been under the 200 day all this time sitting on the 200 hole, which is a lot like the 200 day SMA. It just gives more credence to current affairs. She has fallen down to that low bubble about five days ago, went sideways, and then today's news launched her. Lots and lots of volume, even at the end of the day, lots of volume. Although the technicals look to all be falling on the one hour chart. Let's come down to that five day, five minute. 
All right, it's rough to tell here if she kept 50% or not. I've got a thing I like to do. I draw a line at the bottom of where the surge starts and I draw a line at the top where the surge ends. Then I try to find the middle. Now you can do it by doing math and figuring it all out. I'm just gonna eyeball it roughly right there. Now why I do this, when a stock has a strong surge, I wanna see it keep 50%. In other words, I expect it to lose 50% of its gains. I sure do. So if you're in it for a long hold, don't freak out if it falls down to this point. But if you're in it for a day trade, you better get out before it starts to fall because it's going to probably lose at least 50% if not more. Now that's not to say it happens all the time. There's lots of stocks that stay up, but most of them, most of them don't. So you look for that high, you look for a pullback, and as soon as you start to see it's falling, you should really get out if you're a day trader. A swing trade, I'm happy to see it come down to this line and keep 50% of what it got. I'm happy with that because I'm I'm in it for the long haul. As long as it takes gains over and over again, I'm happy. So this came down to the 50. It tried to hang on to it, and I mean the 50% uh, percent mark. The yellow is the 50-day SMA. So yeah, it did come down to the 50s. It hit all of that at the same time, and it broke all of it at the same time came back up, hit both 50s again, and then it has pulled away. And right now, it looks like it's probably going to fall down to the 200, which has just come onto the scene today. Now, I have noticed that when new SMAs appear, the price has a tendency, not all the time, but has a tendency to weasel its way towards it, whether it be down or up. So, the new strong SMA is the 200. I think this will probably fall right down to that. And that's down at 0013, which is not too far from the low bubble. So I think this has potential. There's a new game going on now. Maybe they're keeping water, maybe they're not. I don't think it's gonna hurt them if they are. But what they're doing now is definitely gonna change the game with mining crypto and staking crypto. This is a good way to make money. We're gonna to have to keep an eye on them. Any press release that comes out is probably gonna cause this to bounce. So if you're gonna get into this, it's gonna not be a short day trade. It is gonna be a semi-long swing trade because we're waiting for that next press release. So I would wait. I would wait for this to dip on the lack of news, lack of catalyst, and the appearance of the 200-day SMA, I expect this to lax and fall and come down and probably not come below this, but it could. So I would wait and you can probably pick up a better price right down here. And when the next press release comes out, I'm sure this is gonna take off. Now this last stock, HMLA, was on my on top and hot list for most of the day, though she did drop. However, she retained most of her gains. This is Homeland Resources, LTD, finished the day at 0076 with over 40% gains. She's on the pink tier, she is current, she's got a verified transfer agent, however, she doesn't have a verified profile, and that is important. Now, I've been going through the news and this company has really been working hard to try to clean up their act. So I fully anticipate this verified profile to be showing up soon. Now they tell us down here in the business description that they are a modest oil and gas producing company. That is not the case. I came over here to their most recent financial and they tell us here that we have an agreement in principle to divest the mineral oil and gas properties to the company's former CEO. That's out of here. Our intended plan of operations is to develop and enhance our social site, their media site, their website called Cannab Club. This is targeting health and wellness in the cannabis media market, supplemented by their strategic acquisitions in GenBio. They tell us down here that GenBio is about ready to produce a health and wellness energy anti-inflammatory immunity drink and they're gonna call that FOMO. So that's what they're doing now. They're not into oil and gas, and they've been making a lot of deals here recently, and we're gonna cover those here. Now keep in mind, this company has no current catalyst. There's no news press today, there's no disclosures. All you've really got is a lot of momentum, build up. This company's been making deal after deal. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna show you two deals that are only spoke of in the 8Ks. They didn't even put out news presses about this. So, what was the relative volume today without any catalyst? 
Well, she's normally doing 4.9 million. Today she did 24 million. So she is kicking butt on the volume. That is a big increase. Share structure, not too bad. I mean, it's not a low float, but it's not a high float. It's average 128 million. Her financials, bringing those up here anytime soon. Um, financials, oh, that's old. That's 2011, 2014. How about quarterly? That's old too. So we got no money here showing up on the board whatsoever. And if we look over at their disclosures, this is the financial I went and got their uh, company description out of for you, which is at the beginning of this month. And that's the only one I see. So I don't see any other information about financials. So they need these deals that they've been making. And right there are those 8Ks I was talking about. Now these came out on the 19th and the 22nd, just a few days ago. But the most current piece of news came out at the beginning of this month and that's where we're gonna start. So let's jump over to the news. Now they've only got two pieces of news here. One from 2015, he gads. And then the one that came out on the 7th of this month. And that's the one we're gonna take a look at now. Now this news came out on April 7th. Himalaya Technologies is pleased to announce that its financial form, the one we were just looking at, that came out on the 4th of this month, has been accepted by the SEC and as a result the stock will go pink. It just went pink this month. They also tell us that HMLA will be a fully reporting stock bypassing the unaudited alternative reporting requirements. Yeehaw! Now here's a list of the companies that they currently own. They've actually got two more that aren't listed here and I'm going to show those to you here in a minute. They got 100% of Canob Corp, which is a health and wellness cannabis social network under design and being built to become a leading destination for cannabis information. They also own 19.9% of GenBio, a biotechnology company specializing in the development of a completely new generation of more effective, less toxic, novel, and disruptive pipeline of medicines for the treatment of inflammatory conditions. And they're starting with uh, that FOMO can. They're telling us here that utilizing Gen Bio's expertise in rare native extracts, management intends to launch the FOMO can that will be formulated to provide maximum immune support benefits nationwide. And the last company they own, also 19.9% of Agarian Group. Uh, they provide digital intelligence to optimize the food supply chain by increasing food safety and profitability for growers. Now this last piece of information here I think goes with the 8K that I'm going to show you. It doesn't make sense without it. They tell us here that we worked hard since June 2021 to bring this vehicle current. It's time to leverage Himalaya for what we envision for its affiliate FOMO Core, ticker F-O-M-C, just like the drink, FOMO can, right? Uh, to become CMGI2 and incubate, spin out, spin off, and create value. What the heck are they talking about? I'm going to show you. Let's look at the very first 8K. So this is the 8K, April 19th right there. And they're not very big. 8Ks are pretty bloody small. You see that big dark black line? Anything above it, you don't need to look at. And normally the information is right below it. Just that simple. And they tell us here that on April 19th, 2022, we executed a letter of intent to purchase the assets, including customer lists, intellectual property, inventory, and other of the online e-commerce provider of paraphernalia for the cannabis market from Online Marketing Group. The business is to be linked to our cannabis social network, Canab Club. And this business operates under the name of Dope Boo. What a name, Dope Boo. The company generated unaudited revenues of $330,000 last year. So they've got a new company called Dope Boo that's going to be working in conjunction with Canob Club. The other now this 8K came out on April 20th and like I said, all we got to do is look underneath that dark black line and this is some juicy information. This tags on to that FOMO company we were looking at in the news. On April 20th, 2022, after lengthy discussions with agents, management met with a craft brewery and soda company in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 
with projected 2022 estimated revenues of $30 million, which could represent high double digit year over year growth. So the company could make $30 million this year. So it's not a startup company by any means. And why are they doing this? Well, they want to take this company public. They want to take this into a public merger. They want to spin this out onto the NASDAQ, I would presume. So they are buying a company just to spin it out and put it on the open market. So if you're in this company, when they spin it out, you're going to get free shares, dividends in this new company when they spin it out. Always a good reason to get into a company. So let's go take a look at that chart and see what it looked like today. I am sure it was higher than 40%. So now we're taking a look at HMLA, six month, four hour chart. She was under the 200 day for most of this time, started climbing without catalyst a ways back a few months, had a huge jump here on, well, that's the 7th. That is April 7th, the day the only news press that came out this year came out. Actually, the only news press in the last seven years. So there was a lot of interest in that. And it jumped a little over 100% fell on the backside hard, landed on the 200, laid there for a couple of days and has now bounced off. Technicals look fairly decent on the four hour chart. Coming down to that 20 day, one hour chart. She is sitting on the 20 day SMA, no 200 in sight. Nope, we've only got the 50 day SMA as our top dog. She took that huge jump here and started falling at the end of that day, gave it all away and is jumping now. Technicals look pretty decent on the one hour actually. Coming down to that five day, five minute. All right, I like that 200, look at that. You see it's coming back up right now. That is a very good, strong technical sign. And just as she was starting to bowl up, she jumped on top. She jumped over the 50 onto the 200 and has pushed herself off it right now. And that's without any news, right? We don't have any catalysts. We don't have any news. She is pushing herself and jumping on the value that's built into the stock that people see without news presses. All right. And if I go ahead and draw my bottom of my surge, top of my surge, grab the middle of my surge right about uh, there. We're right on the money, folks. She took a big jump and fell exactly 50%. She's right on top of her 50% gain mark. She kept 50% of it. Looks like she wants to continue. She's got a push up here. Little bit of volume. Looks like the crossover is just starting on the MACD. RSI is under 60. I like to see it at 60, but it is pushing up. And our CCI, our Commodity Channel Index, is in the green. They're all white when everybody else uses them. I make them red, yellow, and green. Green is real good, folks. So this looks like it actually wants to continue running. And I get the feeling just because the momentum, all the deals they're making, this is going to grow. People are paying attention to all that information and all those deals. And they've obviously got something in mind here, a plan. So I think any news press that comes out, and God knows they need one, the next one that comes out, I'm expecting this to really move. HMLA, folks, I think is going to be a sleeping dark horse. Yeah, that's it. A sleeping dark horse. I think this is going to come out of nowhere and surprise people with whatever it is that they're putting together right now. HMLA belongs on your watch list. Now, I find it kind of curious. Two of those stocks that were running today on top and hot had no catalysts. There was no news press. There were no disclosures. It is amazing how many stocks are running without apparent catalyst. And that's why DD is important. That's why it's worth running over to Twitter and seeing what they're saying, because you never know where you're going to find that information and what it's worth. Looking at eight Ks, just opening them up and looking underneath that dark black line and seeing what it says. You may find something just like I did. Remember folks, DD is gold. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you folks.